Who's ready for another roundup of incredible archaeological finds? We know that we are, and we hope that you are too, because we've prepared this video of archaeological wonders for you. The finds in this fact-filled video come from all over the world, and almost every point in history. But we've brought them all together, and we're excited to show them off to you. Let's get going! We got a rare look at the tools used by ancient surgeons when a funerary bundle was found in the Huaca Las Ventanas site in Peru in March 2022. The burial appears to be that of a Sican surgeon who was laid to rest surrounded by all of his tools and instruments approximately 1,000 years ago. This is the first discovery of a surgeon's tomb from this era in northern Peru. Unsurprisingly, many of the tools would be considered primitive by modern standards. The surgical kit includes needles, awls, and 50 different bronze alloy knives with single cutting edges. The knives have a high arsenic content, the purpose of which is unknown. Also within the kit is a piece of bark from a tree that scientists haven't yet been able to identify, but it's possible that the bark was used as anti-inflammatory medication or perhaps an analgesic, and may have been used in the same way that we still make aspirin tea from white willow bark today. We'll never know the surgeon's name, but the fact that he was also buried with a gold mask and a large bronze pectoral is a sign that he lived comfortably and was held in high regard. Back in 2001, Archaeologists discovered a lost Mayan city called El Patan in the jungles of Guatemala. Within the city is a pyramid known as Las Pinturas because of the beautiful, brightly colored murals inside its first chamber. A recent study of Las Pinturas has revealed fragments of two murals that are believed to contain the oldest known example of the Mayan calendar. The Mayans had a ritual way of organizing time and believed that they'd pinpointed the year that the world would end. Fortunately, they were wrong about that, as the year they'd identified was 2012, and that's long since been and gone. The calendar fragments date to the early Maya period of around 2,200 years ago. The calendar, known as the Zulkin, splits years up into 260 days, roughly equivalent to the human gestation period. Rather than having specific names for months or weeks, the calendar uses more abstract names like 7 deer, 8 star, 9 jade, and so on. These 260-day years were grouped into sets of 52, which was known as the calendar round. We still don't understand much about the ritual meaning of the Mayan calendar, but discoveries like this one get us closer to finding out. In December 2021, Archaeologists in China confirmed the discovery of a bronze-lidded vessel inside a tomb at the site of Liulihe, close to Beijing. This is being treated as a significant find, because the vessel is thought to date back to the very foundation of Beijing as a city during the Western Shao Dynasty era 3,000 years ago. To make the vessel even more interesting, it's thought to be a match for another bronze vessel that was found at the site during the 1970s. It seems the decorated food containers were made as a pair. Both vessels bear inscriptions that include a character called Yang, which is a specific reference to the establishment of a new city. During the Western Chao period, bronze vessels were strictly off-limits to anybody who wasn't a member of the ruling class. There were even rules about how many of them a noble person could have in their grave when they died. There's a strong chance that these vessels belong to someone who played a direct role in the creation of Beijing. It's a shame that we don't know their name. The problem with discovering ancient statues is that you don't always find them in one piece. Archaeologists were reminded of that during a dig at the site of Via Alessandrina in July 2019. It's a road that was built during the 16th century, but runs through the middle of the Old Roman Forum. There, a research team found a large white marble torso. This huge sculpture is missing its limbs and its head. 
Without them, it's unlikely we'll ever be able to identify who the statue is supposed to be an effigy of. However, that doesn't mean that we can't categorize the find. Experts think that the five-foot-long torso belongs to a statue of a Dacian warrior. There were once around 70 such statues dotted around the Forum of Trajan. If the experts are right, the statue, or rather what's left of it, was probably carved and erected in the early 2nd century. The statues stood until the 9th century, when they fell victim to a series of medieval-era demolitions of former Roman buildings and structures. A sculpture of the head of the Roman god Dionysus was found during the same dig a month earlier, but the head and the torso aren't a good fit for each other. Katahoyuk in Turkey is often described as the oldest city in the world. It was first settled around 9,000 years ago. Katahoyuk is a place well known to archaeologists, but not so well known that they've been able to solve all of its mysteries. For example, why were the burial practices that went on here so elaborate and strange? The early residents of the city found the remains of their loved ones to decompose to a skeletal state paint their bones, partially bury them, and then dig them up and paint them again. This process would be repeated several times until a final act of burial was carried out, after which the dead were left in peace. Painted and colored skeletons are still found in the region semi-regularly. Cinnabar and red ochre were the most commonly used substance for bone decoration, but were also the most commonly used substances for the painting of ancient homes. Some evidence suggests that when people painted the bones of the dead, they also painted their homes at the same time. We have to presume there's a significance to these acts, but it's a significance we might never come to understand. We're back to the topic of the ancient Romans now. So, here's another Roman discovery to ponder. It's the remains of a Roman barge found along the Rhineland route in March 2022. The discovery happened during excavation work at the site of the N206G Chalmaveg. At first, the find appeared to be nothing more than a few old oak planks. On closer inspection, though, archaeologists realized that the planks were the flat bottom of a 100-foot-long Roman freighter. There isn't much of it left for the experts to work with, but they say it's unusual because it demonstrates the Mediterranean architectural style, but is made from oak. It also shows evidence of the spring dowel pinhole construction technique, which suggests that the vessel was made during the first century. Very few boats of this kind have ever been found north of the Alps. An expanded dig of the area around the discovery has yielded preliminary evidence that this might once have been a northern ditch for a nearby army camp but that can't yet be verified. How much can we tell about our Neolithic-era ancestors from a few 7,000-year-old grains? Quite a lot, as it turns out. 6,000 years ago, the Neolithic occupants of the Alps lived in pile dwellings. The first pile dwelling settlement was found on Lake Zurich in the 19th century and is now a UNESCO World Heritage Site. More than 100 pile dwellings have been found since then. But until recently, the existence of the dwellings was thought to have been a localized phenomenon. However, in March 2022, scientists found prehistoric plant remains at the site of an ancient settlement on Lake Veris in northern Italy. The grains have the same composition as the crops found at the oldest of the Swiss pile dwelling settlements suggesting a link between the two places and their ancient inhabitants. In fact, the people who lived in the Swiss settlements might have come from here. Radiocarbon dating suggests that the Lake Verisi settlement was first inhabited around 6,950 years ago. The oldest Swiss pile-dwelling settlement is closer to 6,300 years old. The suggestion of a link is tantalizing but more evidence has to be found in order to prove the theory. Next up, we have a very unusual and somewhat macabre discovery. In February 2022, archaeologists in Peru found nearly 200 human spines delicately threaded onto reed posts in the country's Chincha Valley area. 
Peru is a country of ancient wonders, and archaeologists are used to coming across the unexpected there. But this is a bizarre find even by Peruvian standards. At first, the experts at the scene thought that the spines on posts were erected by the people of the Chincha Kingdom, which existed here from the 11th century to the 15th before being amalgamated into the Inca Empire. However, the spines have been tested and proven to come from the 16th century. Inca rule was ending by then, and European colonization had begun. Rather than being mounted as a warning, though, it's possible that the spines may have been mounted as a way of remembering the dead. In the Andes, where Europeans looted the graves of the dead for their gold and silver grave goods, natives sometimes made new ritual objects from whatever was left after the Europeans went away. The same could have happened here. The Bogs of Ireland are known for their preservative properties. That makes them a rich hunting ground for archaeologists. And so that proved to be the case yet again in August 2021, when this Iron Age wooden idol was found in a bog in County Roscommon, not far from the town of Gortnacrana. The eight-foot-tall idol, carved from the trunk of an oak tree, is vaguely human-shaped, but has several long horizontal notches carved into its body. The significance of the notches is unknown. Only 12 Iron Age idols of this kind have ever been found in the country, but this one is easily the largest. Its end has been worked to a point, suggesting it may once have been implanted in the ground and stood upright. It might, therefore, have been a focal point for rituals that happened in the area 1,600 years ago. The presence of weapons, gold, animal bones, and human bones in the bog suggests that it was a place where people came to make votive offerings. So it's possible that the idol itself became a votive offering when whoever made it no longer had a use for it. From Ireland, we moved the colorful and vibrant history of ancient Mexico. In 2003, Archaeologists found a secret tunnel beneath the famous Temple of the Feathered Serpent in Teotihuacan. It's very difficult to access the tunnel, so most of the exploration work has been performed by robots mounted with cameras. Because of that, the process has been very slow. In 2021, archaeologists were amazed to discover bouquets of flowers inside the tunnel. Despite being approximately 2,000 years old, the bouquets are so well-preserved that the cotton ropes that tie the stems together are still in place. The symbolism of the flowers is unknown, but experts think it has something to do with the beliefs that these mysterious ancient people had about the afterlife. The tunnel has pyrite in its ceiling to symbolize the stars, and mercury on the floor to represent the earth and all its water. The flowers might, therefore, have been representative of flora. Why anyone would go to so much trouble to do all of this in a narrow space and then deliberately fill it with soil and rocks is a mystery. It's quite common for a new business to spring up in the same place as a closed one and begin offering the same service, but this might be the longest gap between closing and reopening in human history. In 2021, a food stall in Pompeii that shut down after the eruption of Mount Vesuvius 2,000 years ago reopened to the public. The stall is a fine example of a thermopolium, the ancient equivalent of a fast food outlet. Food sold at such a stall would be cooked at home, kept warm by equipment at the stall, and sold to the public. Over 80 such food stalls have been identified in the ruins of Pompeii, but this recently discovered one is the only one to be fully restored and reopened for business. The Thermopolium, complete with its well-preserved colorful frescoes, was discovered in March 2019 and selected because of its excellent condition. Underneath the ash and detritus, it's essentially undamaged and so required only minimal restoration work. Food on offer at the stall before the volcano included paella, fish, snails, and birds. The modern menu isn't quite so exotic, but still offers the tastes and aromas of ancient Pompeii at a reasonable price. 
A long-standing archaeological excavation project in China's Shandong province bore fruit in August 2021 when this collection of Yuan Dynasty tombs was unearthed. The cluster of 12 tombs, all of which are around 800 years old, comes complete with impressive carved brick murals. All of the tombs feature murals, but only one of them comes with a stone chamber. This suggests that the tomb with a chamber belonged to someone of great social importance. Making the murals would have taken a very long time, which implies that whoever had these tombs built did so long before their death. The process of cracking and patterning the brickwork would have been carried out using wooden hammers and chisels, and any small mistake would have meant having to throw away the brick and start again. This is the largest collection of Yuan Dynasty tombs ever found in the region, and archaeologists believe that it was made for the Guo family. Their name repeatedly appears on the murals, but sadly there's no information about who they were or what they achieved in life that would afford them such a lavish set of burials. Subscribe to the channel, turn on the notification bell, and enjoy watching new videos on my channel. Thanks for watching and see you soon!